Hello everyone, it's Shredder here and we're here for another Frog Watch episode. Uh, so this time there's no real update on my uh, current setup but I thought what I would do is go over some of the guidelines and uh, show you how to uh, look after tadpoles to the best of your ability and I'll tell you about how I did it last year and I was pretty successful last year and I'll show you some of the pictures and things uh, that we I got from last year and you can see some of the little tiny frogs that I grew uh, in my tank. Uh, so first of all, all, all advice that I'm giving here is based on my own experience and my own research that I've done, uh, that I mostly did last year before I did it for the first time. Um, and this all could be based on the UK common frog. So if you have uh, any other species of type of frog, um, my advice might not necessarily relate to, uh, to your frog. And also, um, the, uh, the legal requirements may differ in different territories. For example, in the UK, I believe it is, uh, I think it's illegal to sell frogs, but it's perfectly fine uh, to keep your own frogs if you take them out of your own ponds, that sort of thing. Um, in other territories, um, in other countries and things, there are completely different guidelines. Uh, so some places it's illegal to uh, take frogs out of the wild because the, uh, they might be endangered uh, uh, species or some are pest species and they don't want to encourage them to be grown. Um, others will carry certain diseases that can be transferred around about if you move about that sort of place. So first thing to remember is when you take tadpoles um, from a pond uh, or a puddle or a lake, wherever, wherever you find them out in the, in the wild, um, when, uh, when you return them, because they must be returned, um, they must go back to the exactly the same place. Also, you, you must never transfer frog spawn or tadpoles or frogs from one pond to another pond, because that way you can spread diseases. Uh, so if you are going to be following along with me and looking after your own tadpoles, I'm going to be raising them in a tank. I've taken, or well, I'm going to take some out of my pond and put them into a fish tank. So the um, where you can look after them, you can either just keep them in your pond. It's perfectly fine. Just leave them in there and you can just watch them grow in the pond. Just leave nature to itself. It knows what it's doing and you'll get some frogs that way. Um, but if you want to have a closer look and you, you can do what I'm going to be doing is uh, by putting them into a fish tank. So I've got um, a fairly large fish tank. I think I think what was I put in? I put in about 14 litres of water in my tank. If you saw the last episode when I was setting up the tank and um, it's still only you know a little bit full. There's still plenty more space. But obviously uh, frogs and apples they're not going to need that much, uh, much, much space. So a good rule of thumb is for every litre of water in your tank you can have maybe two, maybe three tadpoles. Probably wouldn't want to go any more than that, you don't want to overcrowd them. So uh, so when setting up your tank, this is what I did in the, in the first episode of this series. And um, you want your tank, you're going to want uh, water, you're going to want some gravel at the bottom and you're going to want some plants. So um, first of all, um, you're going to put in rocks and gravel. So um, they like places to kind of um, nibble around in, they like places to hide. Uh, try not to make, make sure that the, the rocks and little gravel pieces aren't too sharp because they can have quite delicate bodies and if they're, they're digging in around there you don't want them to injure themselves on sharp rocks. So aquarium gravel is pretty good and um, that's kind of designed for that sort of thing. But uh, any sort of uh, rocks and gravel which um, you can find about uh, which are which are fairly rounded edges would be absolutely fine. Um, now I may, I uh, rinsed mine off and I kind of boiled mine, make sure they're sort of sterile. So you don't want to put any contaminants into your into your tank. If you buy aquarium gravel, it probably comes with instructions on how to prepare it, and that's probably fairly safe to use. That's absolutely fine. You could use sand, um, although again, I think it's pretty much fine in this country, but um, in other countries possibly, um, sand can attract mosquito larvae. And uh, you'll find that they will like, lay it in in the uh, in the sand. Well, they, the mosquitoes lay it on on the water, but the sand seems to sort of attract them as well. Um, and mosquitoes can carry diseases. Um, in the UK, I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, but uh, elsewhere that might be different. Um, now you're also going to want um, some larger rocks um, for the when they. Um, metamorph into little froglets they want to start climbing out of the water so they're going to need some way of getting out so banked rocks that they can easily climb up, up on if you use sand or gravel you can put it at an angle at the slope so that the water is kind of like this so they can actually just crawl out um, now again if you have different species of frogs like tree frogs but they will 
climb up vertically grass. I mean, to be honest with you, the, the common frogs I had, they were pretty good at climbing straight up the, the vertical grass. So you can need something, a lid on top of them. Uh, make sure they don't escape because they can they can just climb right up and uh, they'll climb straight out of your tank and you'll never see them again. Okay, so the water itself. Uh, the, now the water, the best water to use would be uh, rainwater or distilled water, bottled water, anything that's fairly pure, um, doesn't have chlorine in. Chlorine's the killer. Uh, chlorine will, will just kill your tadpoles outright. Um, it's very bad for them. Same, same for fish. I mean, if you have fish, you know, you can't really use uh, tap water. Uh, now, um, you can get uh, dechlorinators, so the tablets or, or things you can drop in to get rid of the chlorine. Um, so that's fine to use. Uh, if you use tap water, you can leave it to stand for at least 24 hours and uh, the chlorine will naturally leach, leach out of the water. And that's what I've done with mine. Now, I mean, I do have a, uh, a water still, so I can distill my own water. Um, and uh, that's what I'll be using for top ups and water changes. Um, but if you don't have access to that, you can buy distilled water, you can buy bottled water which doesn't have the chlorine in. Uh, or if you use tap water, you can just leave it for a day or two and uh, it'll be fine to use. Tadpoles and frogs will need oxygen, uh, so the oxygen needs to go into the water. So you can use underwater plants, uh, pond plants, so I'm gonna, that's why I'm going to be using and retaking some of the pond weed out of the, out of the pond and putting it directly into, uh, into the tank. Uh, they're good oxygenators and also they provide a good food source for your tadpoles as well. They like to nibble on the algae on the leaves and then they will start eating nibbling the leaves as well. Um, also, you want to think about the, the shape of your tank uh, because the oxygen will go into the, the surface of the water. So the, the bigger the surface area, the more oxygen you can get in your tank. If your tank is kind of quite a narrow, tall thing, you can get ones like that for fish tanks. The, the top of the, the, um, the tank is where the oxygen goes into the water. And if that's small, it's not going to provide enough oxygen. You want a sort of nice, large surface area, so a nice, wide, um, a sort of short tank to get maximum uh, surface area. Um, right, I think that's pretty much all you need to uh, think about to set up your tank. Uh, once you have your tadpoles in there, you're going to need to feed them. Um, now, tadpoles, when they're when they're very small, um, they'll they'll just you don't really need to feed them much at all. They will nibble on on algae which grows naturally in on your tank and your stones. Any plants you got in there, they'll just nibble on that. When they get a little bit bigger, you're going to need to start providing extra food. Um, now the best food I found was spinach. That was brilliant. They absolutely loved spinach. You can also use some lettuce, not iceberg lettuce apparently. You uh, mustn't use that. Uh, romaine lettuce I think is a good one. Um, but but um, but spinach leaves was great. Um, and what I used to do is boil some water, um, put the leaf in the boiling water for just a short while, just to soften the leaves, make it um, easier for them to bite. Because they've only got tiny little mouths and uh, anything, you know, nice soft leaves is what they need. So you just boil it for a little while and then just float it into the tank and they will just come up and they will just nibble at it and um, they absolutely love it. You can see like a leaf floating in the top there and they're all surrounding it, all nibbling away. They absolutely loved it. Uh, it was really, really fun to watch and do that. Um, now any food left over, once they've kind of eaten the fill, they'll generally swim away. Anything left over, make sure you, cl you clean out straight away. Um, because uh, any, any leftover food will make your water cloudy and make it dirty and uh, we'll, you know you'll need to clean it more often um, so if you do that if you remove the food pretty much as soon as they've sort of had their fill you know, the water should stay pretty clean I mean I, I barely had to change the water at all it was it was staying pretty clean the whole time last year so I'm hoping for the same thing this year uh, when they get a little bit bigger um, they will uh, turn carnivorous, they will start eating uh, meaty things. So things like bloodworm is brilliant. Uh, you can buy a frozen bloodworm, you can get, um, I've got little packets of it, so you just open the packet, squeeze out a couple of bits of bloodworm, and um, it's a little bit of protein. Um, they, they love the protein, just like we love chocolate cake, they love, love a bit of protein. And um, you put that in and they will just dive on it and they will just nibble away at that. Um, if you don't feed them enough, um, tadpoles will be cannibalistic and they will start eating each other. So you want to make sure that you do feed them enough, otherwise uh, you'll have a lot less tadpoles than when you start off. Uh, when you start off with, uh, when the uh, tadpoles uh, metamorphose and they start climbing out, um, you'll need to start feeding them live food. That that can be the tricky part. If you can't do that, then that's the time to release them back into the pond. Um, 
but if you if you're prepared to do things like that um, you can get um, aphids are brilliant if you can find um, some plants around your garden that have uh, aphid infestation you can just snip off a little sort of stem covered in aphids drop it in and the frogs will just pick them off and that's something I, I did as well when they get a bit bigger um, you can actually give them little crickets, uh, these sort of first or second in star crickets you can get from the pet shop for feeding lizards and things. Uh, they will happily eat them. Sometimes they'll be a little bit big and um, and they kind of go <laughs> go everywhere. Um, you'll you'll find you have a lot of crickets floating about your tank because they just jump around into the water. So um, that's not ideal, but it's something that the, the frogs love. Um, little um, little worms, uh, aphids, any, anything, any tiny little bug you can find in your garden. Uh, they will eat uh, very happily. So okay, let's have a look at some uh, pictures that I took last year, and uh, you can see some of my little froggies and uh, and how successful I was uh, last year. <laughs> 